y'all. Today we're going to be discussing soils, specifically soil profiles and soil types depending on the climate. And this is going to be part one of soils. In the next episode, I'm going to be discussing paleosols, which are ancient soils. And so this pairs nicely with that one. So let's get started. Soil profiles and soil types. First, I'll start with the importance of soils. Soils are super important because they are where plants grow and plants provide us with oxygen that we can breathe and they're carbon sequesters, meaning that they take up carbon dioxide, which they also host a bunch of other essential microbes like nitrogen fixing bacteria, fix atmospheric nitrogen or convert it to a form of nitrogen that we can use and plants can use which is essential for basically all of life. So then also I wrote the ecosystem as a whole. Basically all life on earth today relies either directly or indirectly on soils. In terms of human importance, they're important for agriculture, waste decomposition, they're a source of material for construction, medicine, art, etc. They filter water and waste. They provide geologic, climatic, and biological reconstructions or history if preserved, and they are an essential natural resource. In terms of how they form, you can see here that it starts with the weathering of rock. Bedrock is weathered from rain and animals and microbes. And then when vegetation starts to grow, roots also cause a lot of weathering. And because the organic material and roots can only go so deep into the soil, horizons start to form or layers of soil, basically an organic rich layer at the top. And then because rain causes the downward movement of certain ions and nutrients, there's what we call a B horizon, which is typically where these things accumulate and is also known as the zone of accumulation. And then down lower and lower, you eventually get down to bedrock. Now we'll talk about soil horizons in more depth in a couple slides, but first we'll talk about soil structures. There are different ways in which the material of soil can basically clump together to form different shapes and morphologies. And this can form structures such as single grain, blocky, granular, prismatic, or platy. How these structures form is a combination of root penetration, wetting drying cycles, freezing and thawing cycles, animal activity, and inorganic and organic cementing agents, which work together in different ratios to produce different soil structures, depending on the environment, the climate, and what's available. Now, the different soil structures can cause water to infiltrate the soil at different rates. And this is important for nutrient transport throughout the soil, as well as nutrient storage in the soil, rather than leaching, and for plant growth, because the plants need the nutrients and if they leach out through water moving through, through chemical weathering caused by rain, then the plants won't have those nutrients. And we'll talk about this when we get to the different types of soils, depending on climate. But first, let's talk about soil horizons. So we talked about in the formation of soil that organic matter accumulates in the top layers of the soil because plant debris and roots can only reach so deep. And animals that burrow in the soil also stay within the top few layers just so they can keep getting oxygen. And then roots that go further down weather minerals in the further layers and downward percolation of ions and minerals by rain transport causes a zone of leaching and zone of accumulation to form. All these different zones, the organic matter, the leaching, the accumulation, are called horizons. And we break up soil into the following horizons. A, or topsoil, E, or transition zone, B, or subsoil, C, or weathered bedrock, and then R, it's not listed right there, but typically we call R the, the solid bedrock. This is a picture of an actual cut bank of soil where you see the grass is the very thin O horizon, which we call O because it's just organic matter. And then the top soil is organic rich, but it's not only organic matter, it's also got inorganic minerals. And then the transition zone is where the zone of leaching is occurring. And then the subsoil or horizon B, where there is accumulation of minerals that are percolating downward because of the leaching. And then the weather bedrock. So now that we know what the typical horizons of soils look like and why they form, let's get into the different types of soils based on different climates. First, petal firs. Petal fir soils are common in timber regions such as the deciduous forests of the eastern United States. They are rich in organic material and are very fertile. They need plenty of rain though because deciduous trees lose their leaves in the winter and so they need this rain to bounce back in the spring. They are rich in aluminum and iron minerals, which is where they get their name from, ped al aluminum, furs, F-E is iron. And this is because chemical weathering by the large amount of rain they get strips the soils of more soluble minerals and leaves behind the less soluble minerals such as iron and aluminum oxides. Next, we have 
fragile soils, which are common in cool, moist regions, such as coniferous forests in the northern and northwestern U.S., and coniferous trees don't lose their leaves or needles in the winter, and they don't need as much rain because they don't have to bounce back every spring. But the leaf and needle litter that does fall to the ground has a higher carbon to nitrogen ratio than in deciduous forests, leading to a lower pH. Therefore, podzol soils are acidic, and petalfers are alkaline or basic soils. Podzols also have a moist, compacted, humus-rich O-horizon, which is ideal for fungi growth. Next, pedicle soils form in dry, temperate regions, such as grassland regions. There's little rain in these climates, and this causes less chemical weathering. Therefore, there are more soluble minerals present and less iron-aluminum oxides. Therefore, these soils aren't as red in color due to less iron, and they contain more nutrients because of less leaching. However, there is little vegetation because of little rain, and therefore less organic matter and low fertility. Kaliki is a common feature of pedicles, and kaliki is just calcium carbonate accumulations that form from water that begins to infiltrate downward in the soil layers, but before it gets too far, it then evaporates, causing calcium carbonate, which is a soluble mineral, to precipitate out and accumulate in these layers that mark the furthest reaching layers of the water from rain. The last main soil type we'll be talking about is laterite soils. Laterite soils form in hot, wet tropical forests, which receive constant rain, which causes a lot of chemical weathering and in these regions they are stripped of their nutrients such as humus and soluble minerals because of all this rain and left behind are the less soluble minerals like we talked about iron and aluminum oxides and this causes the very rusty red color of the soil because of the oxidized iron. The main concepts that I want you to take away from talking about the soil types in different climates is that where there is less chemical weathering or less rain, soils are thinner but more soluble minerals or nutrients are present. And where there is intense chemical weathering or more rain, soils may be thick but nutrient poor. Also, just keep in mind that we did not discuss all the different types of soils that are formed from different climates. These are meant to be short videos and that would be a long video. There are a lot of different types of soils. We just discussed some main ones so that you understand the concepts behind how climate affects soil type. Okay, so lastly, I'm just going to quickly discuss soil composition and how this affects soil fertility. So soil composition, a lot of people might think is just dirt. It's actually not. The mineral content is only about 46% in most soils. Then you have organic matter as well. And then the rest is water and air, which you might not have thought take up 50% of soils, but they do. This is really important for the growth and health of vegetation and animal life. Also, as you'll see in the next slide, the grain size of these mineral grains is really important for soil health and vegetation. And this is affected by the water, air, and organic fraction. So here's the ternary diagram that a lot of soil scientists and agriculturists use when they are trying to determine the composition of soil and whether it will be a healthy or fertile soil or not. Basically, the three types of grain size common in soils is sand, silt, and clay. Sand is the most coarse grain size in this diagram, silt is the medium grain size in this diagram, and clay is the finest grain size in this diagram. So you can see that this diagram contains different classifications of soil based on the grain size ratio, basically the ratio of sand to silt to clay. And a soil containing all three grain sizes in about a 40% sand, 40% silt, and 20% clay ratio are called loam. And loam are the most fertile soils. And so this is what a lot of people in agriculture aim for. And you can see how we got the percentages by looking at the ternary diagram. If you want to get in the middle of the loam section, then all you got to do is take 20% of loam, you can see the 20 on the side of the triangle that says clay percentage, and you have to take 40% of sand, you can see the 40 on the side of the triangle that says sand percentage, and then lastly you need to take 40% of silt, and you can see the 40 on the side of the triangle that says silt percentage. And that's how you read the ternary diagram, that gets you to the midpoint in loam, and that determines the relative percentages of each grain size that you'll need to get there. So I hope this video was helpful for you, and I hope that it is a good primer for our next video about paleosols, which are even more awesome because they can tell us so much about past climates and past environments. And that is basically what geology is all about. And so I'm really excited to teach you guys how we can reconstruct the past based on these paleosols. And I hope to see you all there. Thank you. Bye.